Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with the secret history inside of your aquarium. Right now we're looking at cyanobacteria and blue-green algae. If you look carefully, and sorry this is wobbly, there's not a good way to set this up without an LCD screen on the microscope. We are at 400 times zoom and this is the blue-green algae I scraped off my driveway and if you look carefully you can see the filaments. Um, you can also see around the outside that in the clumpy areas it gets darker green and that there is kind of a slime coat on it. I hope you can see that. Um, which is different from the white of the of the light from behind. Now this also has uh, single cells you can see in each strain if you look carefully. Let's try to zoom in. I don't know if this will work, but we'll try to zoom in on the microscope, um, but the light's going to get played with. There we go. So you can kind of see the, the, the different cells, the little dots. If you look at the filament um, to the right on your screen, uh, every so often it comes into focus, and you can make out the fact that there are actually there we go that there are actual cells see on the bottom line there looks like a dotted line those are cells so those are individual cells of cyanobacteria and what cyanobacteria is is it's bacteria that traps sunlight and uses it as energy so that means that it just needs water and sunlight to exist in its most basic forms and that can be floating in the air as a single little teeny cell, or it can be in these colonies, which can be called uh, algae slicks or colonies, or they can be called, or bacteria colonies, or they can be called alfux. And alfux are when you have a colony of a bunch of bacteria, um, fungi, or mold, and um, you can sometimes have protozoa, it's all sorts of critters that live in under the roof of a slimy bacteria and algae, sometimes lichen mix. And that's what I was showing you on the rocks outside was a combination of everything. Now, I had thought that this would probably be straight algae in the driveway, but it is cyanobacteria for sure. Um, it looked furry, even though it was slimy. And when you see these individual filaments, then you know that it is a filamentous cyanobacteria. Um, and what that means is that it, it, just like the name implies, it has filaments like in a light bulb, like the little lines uh, that burn out and burn bright, uh, that glow in a light bulb. Uh, and they're long stringy hairs. And this one in particular is a blue-green algae, a.k.a. cyanobacteria, known as Gnostic... Leptolingbia, which leptolingbia, which is a kind of a mouthful to say, kind of tricky to say, but that is what is growing in Seattle on my driveway. And I wanted to compare that, if you'll bear with me, we'll switch down a grade and we'll get a different slide using the microscope here. So that is the slide collected from out in the driveway. And you can see the little smudge of that's all. It's just that we're looking at the edge of that smudge. Now we're going to take a slide that, you know, I'm not preparing these with slide cover slips because they're fairly dry, so they're just dry slides. Um, but we're going to take a look uh, in here at the weaker magnification. And if you look here you can see that we are at uh, 4 times 10, so 40 magnification going on here. And we got to line up the slide with the light so that you can see what's under it. And then we're going to take a look through the eye hole here, through the eyepiece, and we'll try to line that up for you guys. Sorry, I don't have a more high-tech rig, but I just thought this stuff is too cool not to share with you. So, uh, here, in under this sample, you can see that it's a very different picture than that cyanobacteria. So that cyanobacteria looked like little teeny dots, and these hairs 
are, this is only 40 times magnification. So you can see here that you've got more of like clumps with all sorts of uh, different species of, uh, of algae and probably bacteria, obviously, going on here, as well as debris from the tank. But you can see that it still has filaments and hair like a hair algae would, but it is not the same as a blue cyanobacteria. Now, it may have blue cyanobacteria growing on it in company with it, and we'll zoom in even more here. I want you guys to see this. Let's see if we can focus it again. Focus, always be closing. Uh, all right, so here you can see that they're kind of furry strands rather than those regimented lines. And right now we are at 100 times zoom, and or 120 times zoom, pardon me. And you can see that there are other life forms living on this. There are single cell things in clumps there and there is a little bit of fur and that fur is actually how this uh, algae reproduces so it still has the green chlorophyll in it just as any living plant will um, or photosynthesizing uh, organism will I should say um, but what it does is it will break off at these hub points and you will then let's see if we can move the slide slightly without ruining everything and then you will see when it when it splits off from these hubs it can start a new bacteria colony so like right here you can probably see I hope you can see there we go how about that uh, you can see that there are actual uh, little chunks in the lower left that are uh, fuzzy clumps and those are uh, are rhizomes, or um, they they basically work like just like a fern would, and they send out runners and they grow from there. But then they also can break off in pieces due to agitation, or they just float through the water because those little. If you look in the center, there's something that looks like uh, a V. That's two thin little pieces, and that was probably. Uh, holding a spore so if I move the slide again sorry this is hard to do you can see that there are sites here that still are loaded with spores and they can shoot off spores into the water and then grow wherever they have energy and so I just think that's pretty cool but that's the difference between green hair algae and there's lots of different types of green hair algae uh, in the aquarium versus a cyano, cyanobacteria colony and also uh, that would be known as blue-green algae. That's also what's going on in lakes and things when they tell you to stay out of the water. So we're going to walk over here really quick and before we go I want to show you where I got that sample from. So that sample is coming from right here. It's coming from off of this spider wood that I have. Uh, and it is a algae, so it, it looks like your typical stringy, fuzzy algae. Uh, it has some runners coming off of it. Maybe we can see it underwater better. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that it has some runners coming off of it, but um, it's not it's not those single cell chain filaments that you see in other uh, cyanobacteria. So even though there may be cyanobacteria on there, it is still vastly kept in check by the, um, the other kind of uh, organisms. And as long as they're consuming more nutrients than the bacteria, which favors different condi conditions, they will prosper. And right now, this tank is cycled and that means that the good bacteria, the nitrifying bacteria, the decompositional bacteria, all that stuff, the probiotics that live on and in the fish, that has already claimed a lot of the space. But when that dies or when something goes off in your cycle, you can get that blue-green algae um, growing in your water. And some people do that intentionally to grow certain very specific species of fish, but for your average 
aquarium, you're not going to want that. Um, so I hope you learned a little bit of something today. I know that was kind of dry uh, or wet, I suppose. And uh, if you're interested in more science, uh, just this ghetto fabulous science of using a microscope and some uh, Dr. Pepper to fuel me, uh, please support the channel. Click like, share. Uh, if you're wondering the difference between blue-green algae and cyanobacteria, that's it. It's, it's not a huge difference visually, but you can tell the difference under a microscope. And the effect on the, on the ecosystem is huge. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you liked it, if you learned something. And if you want to help me get a more stable rig, I really want to get an LCD screen for that, that microscope. So uh, building viewership and also uh, if you feel really uh, ambitious and uh, are really interested in this kind of fish nerdy stuff, uh, check out my Patreon page. All the money from there goes towards this project of just teaching and learning myself, also learning about the life in our aquariums, the secret lives in our aquariums, and the history that goes into making an aquarium today and where these organisms have been are going and what's going on with them so enjoy take care of yourself take care of your fish and i hope you have a great day keep on swimming guys bye